kind of my career 38 years in uniform, including that time in ROTC and, and during medical school, I've had the opportunity to have some amazing experiences in military medicine. Uh, I got to be in academics. I got to lead urology residency programs, got a chance to command, got to work in the C-suite um, at one of the major hospitals here in San Antonio, Brook Army Medical Center, kind of worked in the operational, strategic went on humanitarian missions multiple times to Honduras, uh, to Africa, to Ghana. I was deployed a couple times to Iraq. And so I just had a really kind of full experience in, in uniform as a doctor, and I really loved it. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do when I retired, and I retired last year. And my job really was to kind of bring together all the doctors in the army and communicate with them what was going on, how could I help them with leadership development, and really kind of usher in a, a new communication strategy because the army, you know, really didn't embrace technology very well. Um, kind of relied just on email and things like that. And at that time, I really had no social media presence. I mean, I joke that I had one follower or one connection on Facebook. And that was my wife and she made me be her connection. And, and so that was my, my social media extent when I started that job, but I really kind of got into using things like Facebook and, and the communicate communication strategies of today's world to communicate with army medicine docs. And so when I got closer to retirement, several people came to me and said, Hey, you know, I'd, I've been in the army for 20 years and I never was more connected to what was going on thanks to what you were doing. And you should consider continuing in that avenue somehow in leadership development or whatever. And one of the guys I talked to is a, he was a podcaster and does a podcast called Behind the Knife. Uh, and it's basically just really focused on general surgery and, and preparing for boards but he said, you know, that's kind of a neat avenue and people can listen at their own convenience and you can do whatever you want. Why don't you consider doing a podcast and focus it on army medicine? And I thought to myself, I said, you know, that sounds interesting. I have no, absolutely no uh, history with podcasting. I've listened to a few podcasts, um, but let me think about it. And I started to think about it and I said, well, maybe we could do more than simply just kind of focusing on army medicine. You know, maybe we can look at military medicine. And so it really did start as a, a very kind of niche thing to army medicine doctors. And then it's morphed to something that's more. So the entire military medical team and looking back over 38 years in uniform, I said, I thought to myself, you know, I've met so many people. I've talked to so many people with so many great stories. And when I finish listening to those stories, I walk away going, I hope that story doesn't die with that person because it's such a great, great insight or a lesson learned or something. And so I talked to my wife and she said, she didn't really care what I did as long as I stayed busy and didn't bug her. And so I said, you know, that gives me kind of carte blanche to, to, kind of do something new. And, and one of the quotes that I came across uh, was from Alex Huxley, and I wrote it down so I don't get it wrong. It, it, his quote is that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. And that really kind of struck me because it seemed to me, at least for military medicine, when we go to war, we learn a lot of things. Uh, you know, Vietnam War, we learned a lot of things. World War II, we learned a lot of things. And then we seem to forget it all. And then when another war happens, we start reinventing the wheel. We start realizing that, hey, maybe whole blood transfusion is something that's good. Maybe using tourniquets. I mean, they used, you know, sticks back in, you know, the Roman days, but we lost that. But then we found out that, you know, hey, maybe those do work. So, basically took that all together and said, maybe we could develop this podcast and come up with a way to really preserve the oral history of military medicine, but also take those lessons learned and, and apply them and make them available for, for folks to hear about. And so that really was the impetus of, of the podcast. 
um, for those who are interested in starting a podcast, there are some things that you really have to consider when you start. And, and that is, why are you doing it? Um, if you're doing it just to, you know, hey, I like getting behind a microphone and just talking about stuff, you're probably not going to do very well. And so really developing a mission, purpose, vision, and, and coming up with your aims of the podcast is, is, is important. And one of the things that I learned really, really soon was you can't be everything to everybody. Um, you can't have a podcast that everybody on the planet is just going to love. And really, the most successful podcasts have a well-defined audience. So you know who you're talking to. You know who really is the person that's kind of tuning in whenever your podcast released. You almost develop an avatar in your mind of, of who that person is. Um, and then other things to consider is, is how, do you, how do you format? Uh, do you have a, a host, co-host? Do you talk to people? Or do you just talk for an hour? or talk for 30 minutes, or talk for 15 minutes. And then you got to figure out how in the world are you going to sustain this? Is this going to be a hobby? Or is this going to be a business? And I can tell you for, for War Docs, it kind of started as a hobby. And then folks that I, I partnered with, uh, some other doctors, we really said, well, we should make this a business and try and make it at least self-sustaining. And you can do that. There are many models, and I won't go into the different models of how podcasting can make money, but there's advertising, there are Patreon, uh, different ways of modeling podcasts. And so you can, you can fund it. What we realized, though, was that we didn't really want to be a for-profit uh, organization. And we felt that our mission really was more aligned with, uh, you know, kind of what a nonprofit does to, to make the world better. And, and so we applied for and received 501c3 status and started going down that nonprofit uh, arena. And we're, we're really still kind of in the early stages there of, of getting things uh, organized and fundraising. And, you know, there, there are some challenges and, and one of the things that has kind of encouraged me was that in doing this for a while, I've had several people call me up and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing podcasting. And can you provide some advice? And so to me, that, that's a validation that at least, at least I'm doing something right that somebody would, might ask me for advice. And so I put together you know, a little sheet of, of podcast essentials. And I, I'm, I won't go through that, but I'm happy to share that with any of the audience that, that really wants to start considering or is considering doing a podcast. Um, you know, like Bob said, we, we really morphed it into not just doctors. And, and so we've talked to patients and, you know, a couple patients that have really been inspiring. We talked to a guy who was in Berlin right before the Berlin Wall fell, and they were in charge of guarding the or providing medical care for, for Rudolf Huss, the last you know Nazi uh, part of Hitler's crew. Just just some amazing things, yeah. and that's the thing that's exciting to me about this is that a lot of times the the guests, you know, I was I've been in military medicine for thirty plus years, and I don't know half of this stuff. And so, you know, I can't imagine, you know, what American public doesn't realize about the things that have really been at the cutting edge that have been discovered and, and really formatted by military medicine. One of the things that I never really expected from this podcast experience, and I'll share this anecdote that was very neat to me, was I was interviewing a one of the ranger docs. And so he'd been with the Rangers for eight years, just an amazing career. And he was telling a story about being on Haditha Dam in 2003, and they were in a major firefight. And one of the Rangers was injured. And he said, I'm going to call him Ranger John. And so Ranger John comes in and he needs to have a breathing tube placed on this dam in the middle of a firefight. And so this doctor does this and he's literally keeping him alive, squeezing the bag to, to breathe for Ranger John. And an hour goes by and they can't get out. Two hours go by, can't get any medevac in there. Three hours, 
four hours, they finally decide that medevac's not, it's not going to be safe for them to come in. So they got a combat aircraft and just put them both on this, this helicopter and got them out. And it turns out the Ranger lived. And so I said, wow, that's a you know, really kind of interesting and, and cool story. Fast forward a couple weeks after we released that episode, I got a message on Instagram and said, hey, you don't know me from Adam, but I'm Ranger John. And, <laughs> and, and that doc saved my life. Is there any way that you can get me in connection with him? That was 20 years ago. And, and I was able to get those two together. And they said it was just an amazing experience to connect. And, and so those are some of the things that can happen that you really don't expect um, with, with a podcast, because it's just, there's, it's all about relationships and, and stories are really neat. And, and that's what I love about podcasting. And, and in this niche, one of the things I found is that a lot of times the military healthcare providers, you know, we think of the, the people who go in, the SEALs, the Rangers, Special Forces, knocking down doors, getting shot at, you know, they're the ones that you know, are going to have the major injuries. And it's true that they have, you know, a lot of physical injuries and some mental injuries too, but the healthcare workers um, also uh, downrange really are, they come into contact with stuff that people never see in America and it's hard to see. And so one of the things that I found in the podcast, just talking to people is that it seems that they've made it easier to say, it's okay to talk about some of these things that I'm dealing with, some of the PTSD, some of the suicide thoughts. It's okay to find help. It's okay you know, for me to understand that I don't have to sit here and do and deal with this all by myself. And so one of the things that's nice for me as a host of the podcast, and, and several people have told me this, they said, when we're talking to you, we can trust you because you've been there and done that. <clears throat> if we're talking to a journalist or somebody we don't know, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're going to be guarded. And so that has opened the door for several conversations. I had one daughter of a guest uh, just email me, say, Hey, I've never heard. My dad has never talked about that stuff. His experiences. It, it was so great to hear it. You know, stories are great and, and everyone loves to hear stories, but if we can use those stories to guide people, help them become better doctors, help them get better care, uh, learn some lessons, gain some insights, I, I think we're setting ourselves up for, for success down the line. Where we're going, I think, is we're looking to partner with like, like-minded organizations. We've talked with um, some big military organizations like AMSIS, uh, with the Uniform Services, Uniform uh, University of Health Sciences, and uh, kind of reached out to some of the uh, Wounded Warrior, Gary Sinise, Bob Woodruff type foundations. We're really looking, you know, once we get some more support of finding other ways to uh, assist people and, and help them, um, mentorship, leadership, connecting people with the, the healthcare that they need, linking students with senior mentors, one of the, the things that we just got started, which I think is exciting, is that the Library of Congress has a project called the Veterans History Project. And what they do is they collect oral histories. And I've talked to you know, one of the folks who works in the Library of Congress, and he's super excited about getting these interviews and, and putting them, archiving them for future resources. Uh, and you know, when I talk to people and they say, okay, you know, you're going to be on your podcast, a couple of people listen to it. So what? Well, I mean, this is going in the Library of Congress. 